Welcome to our Google Classroom webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. And tonight, we're going to extend upon what we did with Note Flight Learn last week and look right at how Google Classroom integrates. So everyone here will be able to see the Note Flight Learn recording from last week. So I'm going to jump right in tonight showing the direct integration. And I'm going to start with what a student sees with getting an assignment right through their Google Classroom stream, how they access their Google Classroom account. I'll show you how a teacher can go in and easily grade an assignment created then how a teacher created that assignment. Then we'll take a step back and look at how to set everything up for the first time as a Note Flight Learn user. So without further ado, let's jump into Google Classroom. So here, I am a student, and I have lots of music classes, and let's go ahead and take a look at all of these classes. I have all the music classes because I am an all-star and I love music and it's my life. So I have, uh, in the stream of this class, I have uh, an announcement pinned to the top that is the login for my Note Flight Learn site. And we always say this is a good idea for everyone to have so the students can always access their Note Flight Learn and Google Classroom site. But in addition, I have a new assignment that my teacher, Teacher004, has given me earlier today. So I'm going to click on this assignment and it's going to open into my Note Flight Learn site as that student right into that score. And while that's loading up, I'll kind of show you that I'm logged in as student 354. We have a demo site here at NoteFlight that we use for all of our testing. And to make sure that uh, we can test every possible configuration, we actually have a thousand students in our demo site that we actually work with. So this is an assignment asking students to record and sing your part. Now with NoteFlight, this can be anything. It can be composition. But in this case, it's a choral assignment and we've taken a chorale. And so I'm going to be the soprano, because why not? I certainly sound like a soprano. And I'm going to go into record mode, and I'm going to record the soprano part. And you're about to find out why I'm a trumpet player and not a singer. So let's go in and go ahead and uh, do a little recording here. I will spare everyone else the rest of that for sure. So imagine the student just recorded the whole part. And you'll notice that the student's username popped up right over here. And here is the audio waveform of the student. So if you haven't seen Note Flight Learn recording before, pretty cool. They can record right in the score. Or I could, as a teacher, record this for something they could sing along. So. So here we go. That's me singing. I'm the student. I've completed my assignment. So because it's a Google Classroom assignment, I have a turn in button right here. So I'm going to turn this into my teacher, and it's going to be marked as turned in. So let me now flip out of this, and I'm going to go into a new view, which is my teacher view. So this is now teacher four. Here's the stream, and I'll refresh this page, and we'll have a student that has now turned in the assignment. So the teacher can go in, simply click on turned in. I can open the student's work, take a look at it, so here's the recording that my student did right here, and I can hear the audio, and as a teacher, I can view this, and I can go back into the assignment, and I can go ahead and grade the student, and of course, my singing is impeccable, so I will grade the student as 100 points. Now, I can also return this to the student if I would like, um, and if for some reason the student wants to, and I'll go back into my student view, um, unturn it in. They can also unsubmit it and resubmit it for grading. So if they submit it and said, oh man, I want to make another improvement, they can unsubmit and then fix it and return it in. And of course, you see the exact time and all of the versions the student did, so you have the option to do that. So you notice right there that the whole workflow, once it's set up, is super easy. Students log into Google Classroom, they see the stream, they open an assignment, complete it, turn it in. You as a teacher can see it and grade it. So that's the workflow that happens over and over and over again, and it's very, very easy. Now, let's take a look at what the teacher has to do to set up that assignment in the stream. So now I'm back to my Teacher4 account, and I'm going to go back into my class, and I'm just going to log into my NoteFlight site. Because remember, once everyone's logged into NoteFlight, they have full access to create music and compose whatever they want. Now, in this case, I'm going to use the NoteFlight Learn library, which is included in NoteFlight Learn. And I'm going to go in and grab a simple composition exercise. Let's call um, one of these. There's all of these in here that you can use for the basis of any sort of assignment you like. 
Let's see what basic composition 4 is. I'm not sure what this one is, but I'm sure it's wonderful. So use only the following pitches and rhythms to fill in the last three lines. So this is a great example of giving sort of a, a pentatonic scale and a couple of rhythm options, and then students can go in and compose around that. So you're going to check out a copy of this score if you're using a, a, a NoteFlight Learn Content Library score, or you can certainly just use something uh, you compose yourself. And of course, you can edit this, right? It is a note flight score, so you can use this or you can create from scratch. But however you made your score, you will then go in and you will create a Google Classroom assignment. Now, as a teacher, you have the ability to do this. So you will select which class you would like to assign this to. So maybe this is Music Theory 101, and you'll give it a title, Basic Comp. For. You can add a description. By default, it's going to be a copy, meaning that students will be opening a copy of your score immediately, and that's what you want to have happen. You do have the option to do a view-only score, so you could do assignments for something like everyone look at it, or you could add something as an assignment just to like give everyone access to a, a scale sheet that you don't necessarily want them to all to change, um, or a listening assignment or viewing assignment. You can do a score where everyone adds a comment but can't edit the notes or you can choose to do a score where everyone can actually edit it. But in most cases, you want students to have your own cop their own copy of what you do. You can add a due date, and we'll make it due tomorrow. It's as simple as that. So now, Music Theory 101 has now been assigned Basic Composition 4. And we'll go back to our Google Classes, and you'll see in Music Theory 101, there's the assignment right there already in there, and these students have been assigned this assignment. So pretty easy as far as creating the assignment goes. And remember, you also want to make sure that students always have access to NoteFlight to create. So it's not just you know assignments in Google Classroom, but as long as you put that URL in the stream, they can access it anywhere. So now, let's take a quick look at how to set up all this for the first time as a, a new teacher creating a new site. So I'm a teacher on NoteFlight.com, and I'm going to create a new site down here. Now this is a demo account, so I have a few already. But let's go ahead and create a new one just to walk through exactly what that looks like. I'll select Google Classroom. I'll give it a title. Now the title you give it is also the URL that will be used for all the students and yourself to log in. So you might want to stay something really simple, but you'll also copy that link in your stream like we looked at before. So you'll add site, and let's go ahead and visit the new site here. And then you'll go into Manage Site and you'll add users. So in this case, you'll go to Members, Manage Classes, and Google will pull in all the various classes. Now, this particular teacher has a lot of classes in Google Classroom. And this is Teacher 4, so let's switch over here. Google doesn't like having people in multiple accounts anymore. So this should work. So it pulls in all the various classes available, and then I simply select which ones I want to add. So let me add my beginning band brass, maybe my beginning band woodwinds. And so what NoteFlight's doing, it's counting all of these users to see how many you're going to bring in. So this helps however many you paid for, this is how many we're going to add to the site, and it lets you know how many are coming in. So there's 94 users in each of these classes. So I'm going to hit Update. And NoteFlight's going to go to Google, and it's going to sync in all of these classes. Now, what's happening here is NoteFlight is actually syncing all of the classes and all of the users, meaning students, inside those classes. So the way you add students and give them permission to go into your NoteFlight Learn site is by syncing in the classes, and then those students come in with the classes. Now, don't worry. At any point in your Google Classroom, you add students or remove students from a class or add a new class, you could always go back and use the same exact workflow to bring in new classes or update the user management of that class. So for example, if you have a couple students add later in the year or if you remove some students from the class, you go into NoteFlight and you say sync classes and you add NoteFlight then calls Google Classroom. We don't update automatically and this is on purpose because if for some reason you remove a class student from a class in Google Classroom but those students still want to get some work out of the NoteFlight site, they still have access to NoteFlight until you do the update. So you can control when they lose work. Otherwise, if you start messing around with members in Google Classroom and NoteFlight's doing something automatically, we're taking away students' NoteFlight accounts. So we want to make sure that that's a very deliberate process that you intend to do. Let's finish up here. So you'll notice these two classes are added and they will be actually added to the site. All of the members will populate as student accounts and those students can now log in. And then you will see those groups come in. So NoteFlight Learn 
copies the classes into your NoteFlight Learn site as groups. So you have the ability to use these as you want. So this process takes just a couple minutes depending on how big the classes are and really how big how busy Google is at the time. We sort of call out and the request comes back and so we kind of wait depending on what's going on. So as this syncs up, I'll kind of show you around the site. This is a new, new site, so I have my scores that are all empty. I have my content libraries here that I can access that we looked at for that assignment earlier. And then community is where all public scores are shared. Oh, and there are the groups. It worked right that. So here are the two classes I brought in. And you can view all groups. That's a little bit of an easier view. And you'll notice there's beginning band brass, beginning band woodwinds right here. So those are synced up in the site. That's really it. That's how you go ahead and set up a site for the first time. You go in, you manage classes, you bring in the classes you want. All of the students in those classes can now log right into Google, and now you as a teacher can create assignments for those particular classes. Now, let's say you're a large school district or you're multiple teachers in the same school and you all want to have access. We have another feature that allows a site to be actually uh, available for individual schools with multiple teachers or multiple districts. And the way this works is you can have more than one teacher inside a NoteFlight Learn site. A site is just the URL. Inside that website, you can have hundreds of thousands of students. You can have 10 students, really however you want. So some schools may have three teachers and multiple students, and you want to have all of those in the same particular site. Well, all you do is you, whoever sets up the site, invites other teachers to the site, and then those other teachers can sync their classes in, and that's how that works. We even have school districts that choose to have one big site so they can have district-wide collaborations. High school students can compose things for middle school students and vice versa. I've seen some really cool projects where middle school students compose and the high school students go in and like record it for them. All kinds of things you can do. Again, in that case, all you do is you invite teachers, as many as you want, and then those teachers can go in and sync in their classes. Now, a big district site, you know, we have sites with thousands and thousands of users and hundreds of classes. But it's really okay because when the teacher logs in, a teacher is only going to see their classes and their students. So it's not a mess for everyone. When a student logs in, they only see their classes. So it's only the person who sets up the site or the site admin is the one who sees everything. But everyone else sees a very clear, easy, clean UI with just their classes and their students in there. So let's take a look at just inviting another teacher. So in the same way that I just added uh, the classes, I can go into members and I can actually invite teachers. And here I can just invite, I have that URL pasted now, I can invite my other teacher, teacher003 at, and you whatever your domain is, I'll just make it up right now. Um, and you can just add them right now. Now, we won't let this teacher in. You can't add any email here. We will only let teachers that actually are valid to your school domain for privacy reasons. So this will send an invite to this teacher, but in order for them to actually log in, they need to be using the same do domain that you've already registered for privacy. So you can add as many teachers as you want. And once these teachers are added, they can simply go into members. They have the manage classes button and they can go in and sync their classes just as you are. So it's really that easy. You can sync your classes, you can invite other teachers, other teachers can invite other teachers. So you have total control in your, in your school how this works. So tonight, we started with a student logging in, opening an assignment, instantly completing it. A teacher logging in, immediately seeing that student's work, giving a grade, choosing to return it to the student or not. We looked at classes and how classes in Google Classroom were synced directly to groups, groups in NoteFlight Learn. Uh, we looked at how to set up um, new classes and how to sync classes with a site, and we looked at creating a new site with Google Classroom. So everything else you can do in NoteFlight Learn is the same, and then you have these additional features with Google Classroom, including the login, the classroom syncing, and the assignment syncing. I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope you've enjoyed tonight's webinar. And if you have any questions, you can always email us at info at Have a great night.